There's so many things that dad can't do. It's a wonder they make it through life at all. <laughs> but dads can't give up, no matter how tired a dad, dad gets or how hard life gets. A dad never quits. And most of all, whatever happens, a dad never, ever stops loving you. Is that clear? Dear God, thank you for being all our fathers and for always loving us no matter what we do. Amen. Will you join me in the prayer for illumination? Loving God, we come into your gracious presence eager for your word. Reveal to us your wisdom in the reading of your holy word and in the proclamation of your gospel. Amen. Our reading today is from various verses of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. For as the, eagle, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he, reveal, he removes our, our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, obedient to his spoken word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. The third chapter of John's first letter is to believers who were settling into their new faith and beginning to pass that faith to the following generations. Hear these beautiful words of identity and grace. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will, what we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do not know, or what we do know is this, when God is revealed, we will be like God, for we will see God as God is. And all who have this hope in God purify themselves just as God is pure. Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and God knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from God whatever we ask because we obey God's commandments and do what pleases God. And this is God's commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey God's commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know 
that he abides in us by the spirit that God has given us. This is the word of the Lord. According to Dr. T. Barry Brazelton, a father's involvement with the child increases the child's IQ, the child's motivation to learn, and the child's self-confidence. In addition, children with involved dads are more likely to develop a sense of humor as well as an inner excitement. That's a pretty interesting quote to start on Father's Day, isn't it? I hope you thought of your own father, or a father you know, or the father you are, or the father you wish you would have had. Now let me read it again. Only this time I want you to think of your heavenly father, the God we pray to each and every Sunday with voices united, our father. According to T. Braze, uh, Barry Brazelton, a father's involvement with a child increases the child's IQ, the child's motivation to learn, and the child's self-confidence. In addition, children with involved dads are more likely to develop a sense of humor as well as an inner excitement. Are you wiser? Better motivated to learn? More self-confident because of your relationship with your Heavenly Father? Please note that we could easily substitute the word mother, or better yet, parent, in place of father. Do you have a well-developed sense of humor? Do you have inner excitement? All of these things are offered to you through a personal relationship with our God. Sorry, men. Any gift you receive today pales in comparison. There are three points that I wish to make this Father's Day morning. Three points about our wonderful and loving God who indeed treats us like his beloved children. The first one is that God loves us enough to forgive us. There's a Spanish story of a father and a son who had become estranged. The son ran away and the father set off to find him. He searched for months but to no avail. Finally, in a last desperate attempt to find him, the father put an ad in the Madrid newspaper. The ad read, Dear Paco, meet me at the front of the newspaper office at noon on sun Saturday. All is forgiven. I love you, your father. On Saturday, countless Pacos showed up looking for forgiveness and love from their fathers. God loves and forgives us. Secondly, God has promised to always be with us and that he will never give up on us. It's a fascinating story that comes out of the 1989 earthquake that almost flattened Armenia. In the midst of all the confusion of the earthquake, a father rushed to his son's school. When he arrived there, he discovered the building was flat as a pancake. Standing there looking at what was left of the school, the father remembered a promise he had made to his son. No matter what, I'll always be there for you. Tears filled his eyes. It looked like a hopeless situation, but he could not take his mind off of his promise. Remembering that, son's, that his son's classroom was in the back right corner of the building, the father rushed there and started digging through the rubble. As he was digging, another grieving, other grieving parents arrived, clutching their hearts, saying, my son, my daughter. They tried to pull him off of what was left of the school, saying, it's too late. They're dead. You can't help. Go home. Even a police officer and a firefighter told him he should go home. To everyone who tried to stop him, he said, are you going to help me now? They did not answer him, and he continued digging for his son stone by stone. The man dug for eight hours, and then 12, and then 24, and then 36, and finally in the 38th hour, as he pulled back a boulder, he heard his son's voice. He screamed his son's name. 
Armand. And a voice answered him, Dad, it's me, Dad. Then the boy added these priceless words. I told the other kids not to worry. I told them, if you were alive, you'd save me. And when you saved me, they'd be saved. You promised that, Dad. No matter what you said, I'll always be there for you. And here you are, Dad. You kept your promise. God keeps his promises. And he has promised to love us, forgive us, and to always be there for us. Finally, we are God's own. It is by God's grace that we are able to breathe in and breathe out. It is by his mercy that we wake up every morning. Fred Craddock, while lecturing at Yale University, told of going home one summer to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, to take a short vacation with his wife. One night, they found a quiet little restaurant where they looked forward to a private meal, just the two of them. While they were waiting there for their meal, they noticed a distinguished-looking, white-haired man moving from table to table, visiting guests. Craddock whispered to his wife, wife, I hope he doesn't come over here. He didn't want the man to intrude on their privacy. But of course, the man did come to his table. Where are you folks from? He asked in a friendly manner. Oklahoma. Splendid state, I hear, although I've never been there. What do you do for a living? I teach homiletics at the Graduate Seminary of Phillips University. Oh, so you teach preachers, do you? Well, I've got a story I want to tell you. And with that, he pulled up a chair and sat down at the table with Craddock and his wife. Dr. Craddock groaned inwardly. Oh no, here comes another preacher's story. It seems as though everyone has one. The man stuck out his hand. I'm Ben Hooper. I was born not far from here across the mountains. My mother wasn't married when I was born, so I had a hard time. When I started school, my classmates had a name for me, and it wasn't a very nice name. I used to go off by myself at recess and during lunchtime because the taunts of my playmates cut so deeply. What was worse was going downtown on Saturday afternoon, afternoon and feeling every eye burning a hole through you. They were all wondering just who my real father was. When I was about 12 years old, a new preacher came to our church. I would always go in late and slip out early. But one day, the preacher said the, bened 